The Wanderers. My name is Judson. It is, what is it, Wednesday, January 17th, and uh, I'm in Nashville, and uh, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, from the road, Shannon has updated our store. Uh, he's a bit under the weather, but we're going to be back in studio shortly. But what I wanted to let everybody know is that we do have socks available now, our own uh, Renegade Roach socks. Check it out at shoprenegaderoach.com. And have you grabbed your hoodie yet? Um, Lacey Rostjack has been wearing uh, the hoodie uh, left and right. It looks amazing. I love wearing the hoodie. And uh, I hope everybody's doing good and surviving this uh, this snow snowstorm um, because right now it's like nine degrees I don't know in Nashville and uh, so what I've been doing uh, is basically you know staying inspired uh, doing a lot of writing and and watching movies uh, but I find that there's a shortage uh, initially a shortage of movies once you start you know going through the Hitchcock and going through Scorsese and um, you know, I've seen most of Tarantino's films. I guess Tarantino is who people, you know, really like, um, you know, as far as uh, a contemporary filmmaker. Uh, I've just gotten into Fellini, um, and I watched, uh, the Fellini film I watched uh, was Once Upon a Time in the West, which, you know, is just an incredibly impressive movie. Um, it's a little polarizing. Some people think it's a bit long. Um, uh, but that was kind of my entrance into Spaghetti Western, Westerns, and I'm a little late to the party. Um, but that's okay, because um, I feel like right now is a good time to, to, to learn the Western genre. Check it out! You know, I've got my uh, Fender Twin Reverb. You know, I always forget what year that is. Um, but it's 1970s. It's, it's not a reissue. I made sure that, uh, you know, that I had a real one to play out of. And I am not uh, necessarily a, a gear junkie or anything like that. Um, but I want to be able to, to, to make music uh, that sounds authentic. So, you know, having, you know, a non-reissue Fender amp uh, has been vital um, to, to what I've done with Judson McKinney and the Wanderers and Shannon Forrest in the studio. And we've used a few different amps. Uh, his son, Ethan, actually makes amazing amps. And we've been using uh, one of those amps and uh, a slew of amps. But, but initially for what I would say our, is our first album, and uh, I want to talk more about that too, you know, the concept of, a, of an album, you know, uh, I use mostly this, this amp. Uh, I'll show it to you one more time. So that's what you're hearing. Uh, basically, oh, you see the little nick? Yep, that probably happened in a bar somewhere. That wasn't me. Because this thing's from the 70s and uh, twin reverb. So uh, welcome to our channel. We're gonna be live in studio. I don't know when, Shannon's a little under the weather. Uh, he is back from Los Angeles and Hawaii. And you know, he's been, you know, grinding it out at the beginning of the year with Toto, uh, sitting in that chair. And, um, te quiero. I'm snowed in in Nashville right now and I'm snowed in and can't really go anywhere and that's great because uh, that forced limitation is key for me to to stay creative right now you know M meaning not being able to just go out and you know do something stupid you know uh, you know bar hop or do something I don't need to do you know I can sit here and stay focused I can work on new ideas, new songs, and watch a lot of movies. So we're talking about movies. And uh, what's your favorite movie right now? I mean, it's winter time. It's a good time to put the cinema 
on in your own home, you know? What is it, what movies are you watching? I tend to favor suspense films and l lately Western films and certain types of dramas. Now, obviously, I love uh, The Godfather and uh, Coppola, like anybody else. I gotta see if I can stay charged. But, um, I'm sort of particular with dramas and comedies. They sort of have to do a certain thing for me to really get into it. And a movie I just watched that I was really impressed with, older film, I'm not sure what year, if it was 90s, late 90s, I have to look, uh, maybe somebody can help me, but it was What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Was eating Gilbert Grape, and um, I watched that two nights ago, and then had a little bit of technical mishap and had to watch it, finish it last night. But man, uh, what a film! What a film that was uh, by a Swedish director, and uh, a really, really cool soundtrack. It's it's kind of like. Remind, the soundtrack reminds me of Vangelis a little bit, but m more uh, more homespun. It's like a homespun version of Vangelis. Write that word down, homespun. I resonated with that film because it really, you know, reminds me of a couple things. I spent time in Austin, so I recognize the Texas landscape and also, it reminds me of South Carolina, where I'm from. So, that was a good film. It does remind me of small town South Carolina. I grew up, you know, in Pickens County. If you look at a map, it's in the foothills. So, that makes me a Piedmont person, I suppose. It's funny, they were asking that guy, Oliver Anthony, if he was an Appalachian person. Or they, were, they, were, they weren't asking him, they were just saying he was Appalachian, but Oliver Anthony is not Appalachian, and uh, neither am I. Uh, we're Piedmont uh, folks. In fact, South Carolina was known for something called Piedmont Blues. Now, I'm no expert at playing Piedmont Blues, but it's a hopping blues, and there was, you know, different types of pickers from that era, but I don't feel like they ever really got the credit or the notoriety that the, the, the folks from Mississippi did, uh, the Delta Blues and things like that. But you could check it out. Um, there was a guy named Pink Anderson, and he was from Lawrence, South Carolina, pretty close to where Shannon and I are from. Uh, you can find a lot of his tracks on YouTube because uh, blues connoisseurs are they're compiling, you know, the different blues artists. And Pink Anderson is is someone that has some sort of, I would say, unknown notoriety because he was the name of Pink Floyd, him and one other guy. So Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett, named the band after Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. You can check both of those players out, Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. And uh, I'm more familiar with Pink Anderson than I am Floyd Council because Pink Anderson's from South Carolina Floyd Cancel was from North Carolina. So an interesting Carolina combination from the name Pink Floyd. And interestingly enough, Carolina is a feminine word for Charles. So there's a, there's a big connection between the Carolinas and the mother country, England. Um, which I guess now we'd refer to 
primarily is the United Kingdom. But there's a big connection there. And interestingly enough, you know, talking to British people, you know, over the years, you know, here and there, I have heard that they really enjoy spending time in the South. I've also heard that the accent of the Southerner, at least at one point, I don't know about now, tended to uh, be closer to Shakespeare in English, you know, or the, the older English, which is not really old English, but. So welcome to our channel. I appreciate your support. We've got a lot of interesting things going on in 2024 and some big tracks coming out. Um, talking about our album. So, you know, the past year or so, uh, and maybe it's even longer than that now, um, I guess somewhere between one and two years, we worked on a collection of songs and were very intricate, you know, and very detailed about the writing. The writing came first. And then, you know, in the record making, making sure everything paid off, that it was cutting edge. You know, Shannon and I playing all the parts and when we needed it, we brought in, you know, amazing studio players when we needed them. Um, we found that we didn't really need them as much as we thought, but we, but, but, you know, uh, uh, we did, make use of, of the talent in the Nashville area. And as of now, we've kind of released, a, a, you know, a slew of the tracks. Uh, I'm interested in putting it, you know, all together as, as an album concept. And um, I think that, you know, moving forward, you know, in the timeline of Judson McKinney and the Wanderers having, you know, having albums will still be important. It's important to me because I think it, it gives a connection of of timing and place and uh, there is sort of like creative periods of work, you know, like they call it, I guess they call it album cycles. Now that's somewhat of a technical term, uh, you know, because it, it, it was, you know, based on, you know, a, a type of creative and business cycle that you know, some would argue doesn't really apply now because everything's streaming. But I think in terms of just the artistic integrity of it and really how the process of, of making, record making occurs that an album, to me is still important to, to, to identify. And even if it's after the fact, uh, it's, it, the way, it's important to me, you know, so uh, this is Wednesday, I believe, and uh, I'm gonna try to go for an hour. This is something, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really wanting to be consistent this year uh, with everything that I do, you know, uh, to succeed and have, and have really cool stuff going on in 2024. So lots of movies right now. Uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Definitely recommend that. And uh, what else did I see? The Taking of Pelham 123. That was a surprise. I kind of pulled that one out of the, of the slew of m movies that I had access to on Amazon. And uh, man, never heard of it. Apparently there was a remake with Denzel Washington. Never saw it. Um, and I'm glad I didn't because this one with Walter Matthau was, was incredible. What I really liked about the taking of Pelham 123 was that not only was the action sequences, were the action sequences top notch and well executed, but the way they incorporated the sense of place that is New York at, in that time, which was the 70s, uh, New York City in the 70s, you know, was was pretty remarkable and I think spot on. And I think that uh, art that is able to capture a sense of place tends to tends to do better, you know. 
Here's a song I wrote that's going to be on the album with Shannon, Forrest, Judson McKinney, and the Wanderers. And it was sort of his idea. Which is what happens with a lot of our tunes. He'll pitch me a title. And uh, we're just going to go from there. It's called Instant Stalker. So how important are albums? Someone say that albums are not important at all. That it's just about a single now. And for us, we're one single away from something big, you know, and reaching a lot of people. 
We're just one moment away of something big happening. And I know it. I'm from South Carolina. And I tell you this. South Carolina is not going to go down as being the state of only Hootie and the Blowfish. Nothing wrong with them, but we got a lot to do. Uh, welcome to Judson McKinney and the Wanderers, and this is Wednesday night. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we're going to be back in studio with Shannon Forrest very shortly. Man, it is a snowy time. Shall we check it out? Let's. Well, you can't really see the snow too much except right here. A little bit of snow. I think all this social media stuff is forcing people like me or at least tempting people like me to just talk too much. Golly, did you ever think the world would come to so much talking? What about performing, you know what I'm saying? Let's play some songs. This is from that same album cycle. It's called Wanderer of Worlds. I've always been against the wars But I'm tired of living in the Truman Show, yeah Ooh. My redneck's coming out of me, baby Ooh. I love you and I don't mean maybe While they complain about the girl Who looks so lovely but she don't know nothing oh, My redneck's coming out of me, baby Ooh. I love you and I don't mean maybe Don't mean maybe I 
I don't mean maybe, don't mean maybe. Walk me through this world. Won't you be my girl? A psychedelic angel burning beside me. Fly me through the ages, little baby. Walk me through this world. Walk me through this world A psychedelic angel burning beside me Diving through the edges, little baby Walk me through this world Piedmont Blues, Pink Anderson. I got to record one of his songs in the studio one time in James Island for an album called Confederate's Last Farewell that will be out at some point on JudsonMcKinney.com. I don't know when the full thing is gonna be out because it still has to come out on vinyl. The whole vision of it was to put it on vinyl. And this was an outtake, but I'll play it for you because we're talking about South Carolina and we're talking about that upstate area where I grew up, Shannon Forrest grew up. Y'all wish Shannon well too because he's, he's a little under the weather right now. So send some good vibes and prayers his way for a full speedy recovery. So definitely send him some some good energy and some prayers because he needs to, to get better. We got a big year ahead of us at Judson McKinney and the Wanderers. And um, man, there would be no Judson McKinney and the Wanderers without Shannon Forrest. We met at Blackbird Studio. Actually, we originally met um, on the phone a really awesome phone call that we had, so special, um, that we had uh, through his friend, Mark Needham, who's really, gosh, he was involved with some pretty big stadium projects. Imagine Dragons was a, was a big one for him. Uh, he had, Mark Needham had something to do with the Killers. I believe it was Mr. Brightside, you know? And there may have been more to that story, but I know Mr. Brightside was, you know, that's really the track that they're known for. Um, but I was working on an album in Blackbird Studio with uh, the Blackbird Academy, which is, you know, John McBride's program, which is amazing because what they can do is they can train engineers on the spot in real life session environment. It's not like being at Full Sail or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's much more hands-on because you're actually at Blackbird Studio, which is an amazing studio. And if you've ever been to Nashville and you're a musician, you'll know about Blackbird Studio. Everybody knows about Blackbird Studio. So I was doing these albums, um, gosh, lots of different songs, bringing in amazing musicians from South Carolina. And I did an album with a guy named Dominic John Davis I had on bass and uh, he plays for Jack White. And then we had one of his friends, John Radford, who was a really, really fun guy to work with, really easy going. I think he lives in East Nashville somewhere, but uh, played on Brendan Benson and um, some different different records. But uh, I had Mark help me with the, the post-production, you know, doing mixing. And Mark uh, started talking to me about Shannon Forrest. He said, Shannon's got this amazing studio and you really ought to check it out. And, you know, I don't know if he knew that I was from South Carolina or not. I don't remember it coming up in conversation, but maybe he did, or maybe he had a hunch, but we had a conversation and I found out the first time I talked to Shannon was, he was, uh, you know, from Easley, Easley, South Carolina. 
which is really kind of a blip on the map, you know? I don't know if you've been to Easley, but it's kind of close to Greenville, which is, in a way, a blip on the map as far as the city goes. I mean, there's Greenvilles in, like, a lot of different states, I think. I feel like there's a Greenville in North Carolina, a Greenville in Mississippi. But I think being from the same place, we hit it off. And there's we hit it off for a lot of other reasons, too. I mean, but... Uh, yeah, send him good vibes and prayers. Um, we got to gather our strength for a, for a good 2024. Back to music. Here's a little track that you might like. It's a Pink Anderson song. It's called Every Day of the Week. And this is... Piedmont Blues song. It'd be called Piedmont Blues. You ought to see the pillow where my bed used to lay. If you got you one woman, show sure, Lord, you better get five. Cause two might quit and three might die. I got a Monday. Woman, work on fourth in me. Woman just bring me all the change. My Wednesday, woman, woo, bring me whiskey and beer. My Thursday, woman, raise sand and she call me ill. My Friday, woman, would not treat me right. My Saturday, woman, rocks me, Lord, all night. 